the horrible sound of a channel clipping. Something somewhere is being overdriven. On the flip side, you simply can't get your violin loud enough to be heard and the fader is all the way up. How do we avoid both of these catastrophes? Stay tuned and we'll explain it. Hey everybody, Matt Bell here with the Electric Violin Shop. Welcome back to our Classical to Radical series, where we're teaching classically trained violinists, violists, cello players, upright bass players, how to easily enter the world of amplified music. Any experienced sound engineer will tell you that probably the most important part of his job is gain staging. If you can get gain staged properly, you're more than halfway through the battle to getting good sound. So what the heck is gain staging? Well, every single stage along the signal path has an input level and an output level. And each stage has a window that it wants to operate in. Say you have a violin that's feeding a multi-effects pedal, that's feeding an amp, that's feeding your board. Each one of those devices has a maximum signal strength that it can handle. If at any point in that chain we're overdriving one of those devices, you're going to get a clipping sound that gets propagated through the whole chain. On the flip side, signals have noise. Every place in your signal chain is actually going to generate just a little bit of noise. So you've got this noise amount and then you've got the amount of signal. Okay, if the signal is too weak, then that ratio of signal to noise is not good. If the signal is too strong, then you end up clipping, right? So we want to make sure that our signal is, is pretty strong compared to the noise, so that you don't really hear the noise but we don't want it so strong that we're clipping. So at each stage, we want to have the hottest possible signal without overdriving anything, right? So how do we manage that? Ideally, on your violin, you'll run that violin knob wide open. Now, some pickups actually change tone a little bit when they're wide open. My Barbera pickup, to me, gets a little bit grainy when I'm running it wide open. So I actually back mine off to about 80%. Barberas, however, are super, super hot, so I still have plenty of signal to drive the rest of my chain, even with my volume knob at about 80%. You'll have to experiment with your instrument, but wide open is a really good place to start. I also recommend that multi-effects pedals run at their maximum output level. Just crank that sucker to 10, or if you're really lucky, 11. Multi-effects pedals are designed so that any one module inside that box cannot overdrive the other modules in the box. So no matter how complicated your signal chain is inside that multi-effects pedal, you don't have to worry about uh, gain staging problems inside there. So you can treat that multi-effects pedal as one unit from a gain stage issue. As you come out of your multi-effects pedal, you're feeding your amplifier. Most amplifiers have a gain knob and a volume knob. These are not the same. The gain knob controls how much signal are you sending to the, the first section of that amp. And if you push that too hard, you're going to overdrive it. Now, in a guitar amp, that's actually desirable. That's how we get that, that gainy, distorted sound in a guitar amp, is that we intentionally overdrive that first signal. Now, we'll talk more about intentional distortion later on. But right now, we're going to assume that we're trying to get a clean signal through each one of these sections. If you don't turn your gain knob up loud enough, you're going to have that signal to noise ratio problem that we talked about. So you've got to sort of find the sweet spot in there. With some amps, especially these acoustic guitar amps that we like so much at the Electric Violin Shop, that gain does color your tone some. That's activating all that warming circuitry in the, um, in the acoustic guitar amp. You're going to have to play with that gain knob in order to optimize the tone and the level that you want. Just be aware of the fact that you may not have full access to the whole sweep of that knob, depending on your signal strength in and, uh, and how much you're going to take out. After all that, your amp has a volume knob. This is another one of those situations where you may not have access to the full range of the knob. If you send too hot a signal to your front of house board, it'll clip. If you send too weak a signal, it's all noise and no signal. So it's the same kind of thing. We got we to gotta view an amp as a two gain stage device. If you're not using a multi-effects pebble, maybe just a DI, say the LR Bags DI. But there is a gain knob right here. This is your input gain level. There's no indicator on here to show you where the signal is. There's no LED indicator. So you're just going to have to use your ears. Probably a safe thing is to start with it sort of in the middle. There's a little white dot on there. Maybe put it about 12 o'clock. If you have plenty of signal coming out and it doesn't distort even when you're playing as hard as you can. Now think double stops on your lowest two strings, whatever uh, that is on your instrument. And you're not distorting with this here. You've got plenty of signal, then you're probably okay. 
If the signal is weak, then you can bring up your input gain or your volume knob. There's an overall volume knob here at the top too. You're gonna to have to listen for clipping in your amp or in the sound system. If you're not clipping at the board, and your engineer can tell you that, but you still hear distortion, that means you're clipping inside the bags or you're clipping somewhere upstream of that. So you'll need to turn down this input gain knob until that clipping clears up. Now, once you've got that down and the clipping is cleared up and he doesn't have a very hot signal out front, now you can turn up this output gain. Just know that that's, that's increasing the amount of signal you're sending out of here, so now you gotta worry about overdrive and other things in that chain, depending on what's downstream from you. We talk about upstream and downstream. The basic idea is to know what your signal path is. And the, the easiest way to do that is just follow the wire. Come out of your instrument, follow that wire, into the first component of your rig, and then follow that out to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. Each place in that chain will have the capacity to clip. So you'll want to do some troubleshooting and sort of figure out if you are having a clipping problem, where in that chain am I clipping? Maybe you want to bypass some things. Maybe you want to change the order. Um, you might have a pedal that's got a level knob on it somewhere that is pushing the output level of that pedal higher than what the input level of the next pedal can handle. Maybe you need to switch those two pedals. Maybe you need to turn that down. There's just, there's a lot of possibilities. Just think that every single stage in your chain has an input level and an output level and a window that it can, it can work with. I have one pedal that clips really easily for me. So I put that pedal in an effects loop in my, um, in my multi effects pedal. You might have an effects loop in your multi effects. You might have a effects loop in your amp. So I can turn down the send strength to that pedal. So when I'm sending out of my multi effects, I actually turn that send down so that it sends a weaker signal to that pedal so that it doesn't clip. And then I can boost the return level because you'll have a send and a return level that you can control. I can turn the send down and then I can boost the return so that that pedal can operate in the window that it wants to operate in, but I'm still sending a strong enough signal to my engineer that my, uh, my signal is useful. Your sound engineer will have an input gain control on his board or her board. That's where he or she evens out everybody's signal. If you got a 24 channel board, there are gonna be 24 uh, input control levels on there. That'll be either called a gain or a trim depending on the board. We're actually going to do another video about uh, sound boards and how channel strips work and how DCAs work and all that. So um, if you don't have an engineer and you want to understand that stuff, just stay tuned and we'll eventually get to that. Some people send a hotter signal than others and that's where your sound engineer can control. Maybe the kick drum sends a super hot signal, guitar sends a real hot signal, violin not so hot. So I can I can sort of adjust those so when I'm running my faders, I've sort of got you know zero dB on one thing is about the same level as zero dB on another. So that's where your engineer controls all that. He also has meters so he can see visually how strong a signal is coming through his channel strip. Experienced engineers know how to deal with the dreaded sound check sandbag. I'm a sound engineer. I work, uh, I run sound sometimes, I play sometimes. We know about your gain. We know that you barely touch this instrument during sound check because you don't trust us to turn you up during the show. Then when it's time to solo, you dig in both heels, you grit your teeth, you snort a little bit and you slam that bow into the violin and you have no idea why this thing distorts and it sounds terrible and we have to turn you down. Please, 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 please. When you sound check, check the way you're gonna play. With your boosts wide open, with the loudest effect that you have, with your volume knob, where you're gonna put it down the show, and play, play like you mean it. You're gonna play a little louder in the show, right? Because there's a little more energy coming from the crowd, the lights are on, things are moving, maybe you've had a beer or two. You're gonna play a little bit louder during the show anyway. But at least this way, your sound man has a fighting chance of getting you gained right so that he's got you in that window he can operate in, he's got you above this bad signal to noise thing, he doesn't have you clipping. So when you sound check, it really is important. Please, please, please don't surprise your engineer with this extra 4 dB boost that, you know, oh, I'm gonna solo, I, I know he won't turn me up. When you sound check, he's doing the gain staging in the board, that's why it takes so long. When you're at a festival and you hear that kick drum, just boom, 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 and it's going for an hour, and you're like, oh my God, can, we can all hear it, okay? That's what the engineer is doing. He's gain staging that thing. And then of course he's working with EQ and compression, but a big part of what he's doing is trying to make sure all of his gains are right. It, just, it takes time. All right, there's one more concept here and it's the concept of an input pad. Your amp may have one of these. Your soundboard probably has one of these. Your DI might have one of these. Your multi-effects pedal might have one of these. 
Generally speaking, for a violin, because they're not super hot, you're not going to need this input pad. So leave that disengaged. A lot of uh, DIs will have like a minus 20, a minus 10, and zero. Put it on zero. But if for some reason you're overdriving this device, no matter what you do, then you can activate that pad. It, it'll drop your levels substantially. Some are 10 dB, 20. I may have seen more than that. I can't remember. They're all different. Just know that that pad is sort of a last ditch effort to protect a device from a signal that's coming in that's too hot. And just, there's no way I can control this. I've got the volume, input volume all the way down. It's still too hot. Well, I can kick that pad on and then all of a sudden I can control my input volume a little bit. It is a potential trap if someone hands you a DI to use and you plug in without really looking at it and your sound engineer is like, man, I've got you wide open out here. All I've got is noise. I, I can't get you. Well, look at the DI. Make sure that it's not set to minus 20 dB or something. Pop it back to zero. However, before you do that, always warn your engineer. He might be gain up all the way and you're about to overdrive a bunch of stuff and blow a bunch of speakers. Those pads make a huge difference. Now, come to think of it, that's a really great piece of etiquette that's going to save ears and equipment and probably your career. Before you plug or unplug your violin, before you do any major volume changes to any piece of your rig, unless you've got a muting device somewhere, a volume pedal or a mute switch that's going to protect everything downstream, make sure your engineer has you muted. You can just sort of, you know, hey man, can you, can you mute my violin? I'm about to unplug something. And then wait till, okay, I got you muted. Those big pops when you unplug or plug the violin in, those are really hard on people's ears. They're super hard on equipment. We call those transients. And it's when there's no signal coming through and all of a sudden there's this huge pop. You can blow speakers like that. If somebody's wearing in-ears, they're probably gonna slug you. Um, so that's just sort of a piece of etiquette. All right, that is a basic primer on gain staging. This is it's sort of a complicated thing. I try to make it as simple as possible. If some of that's not clear or if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section and we will try to answer those. Or you can hit us up at info at electricviolinshop.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're really having a good time doing this series. We're getting a ton of positive feedback from you guys. It always makes us feel good to know that you're watching these videos and you enjoy them. So please let us know. Share these with your friends. Uh, click the subscribe button so you can be notified every time we put up a new video. And uh, we'll see you next week.